MLB now continues alongside John Smoltz, John Heyman, Rustin Dodd, Ahmad Nam Burke. Taking a look at Philly Spring Training here in Clearwater, Florida. The Phillies certainly hoping to emerge as contenders in that National League East. Looks to be a tough division right now. Obviously, Atlanta Braves, the Washington Nationals, World Series champions, and the New York Mets as well. But that will not deter Matt Klintak, uh, who, of course, will do his best to make this Phillies team a contender. Matt, thanks so much for the time today. Let's start with just some of the moves you made this offseason. I and mean, clearly looking to bolster your team. Let's start with Zach Wheeler, starting pitcher that you believe has upside, which is why you gave him $118 million. What was the thinking there with Wheeler? Yeah, you know, one of our goals uh, for the offseason was to address our starting pitching and to improve it. And we considered a lot of different possibilities there. You know, we could have added multiple guys towards the back end of the rotation, uh, could have pooled the resources together as we did to, to land a front of the rotation guy. And ultimately, that's what we determined was the best course for us because we feel like we've got uh, a nice young stable of, of guys that can pitch, you know, at, at a minimum at the back of the rotation, but hopefully better than that. But we, what we really felt like we could use was that front of the rotation guy to pair with Aaron Nola that really gives us an opportunity to, to, to compete uh, with the better teams in our division. And I know you said in the opener, you mentioned about how competitive the National League East is, and we agree. I mean, this is, it isn't, you know, it doesn't happen every year that you have four teams going for it uh, to the degree that these four teams are going for it in the same division, and that poses some some challenges, but we felt that adding Zach to pair with Aaron, uh, hopefully getting Jake Arrieta back and healthy this year, um, and relying on some of the promise of you know Nick Pavetta, Zach Eflin, Vince Velasquez, and ultimately Spencer Howard, that that should give us a you know pretty good group to head into the season in our rotation. Yeah, Wheeler did have a sub four ERA, almost 200 innings, so certainly like that durability. But I think you hit on Matt the key piece that rotation, which is Jake Arrieta, a guy who's been so dominant in the past with the Cy Young, but clearly struggled in the second half. His ground ball rate decreased a lot. What do you think happened with him, and why are you confident that Jake can get back on track? Well, I mean, in the second half, he was pitching with a pretty serious bone spur in his elbow. He couldn't, he couldn't really flex his elbow at all. He was scrapping pitches left and right, just trying to grit through it. And he really did uh, as good a job as we could have hoped, really uh, pushing it as, as far as he could push it, but uh, eventually had to shut it down and have the spur removed. So I think that's what gives us a lot of confidence in Jake this year, is that he's going to be pitching healthy for one of the, you know, for the first time in several years. Um, and you know, we know what this guy can do when he, when he is healthy. Uh, we saw that when he was wearing a Chicago Cubs uniform a couple years ago. So he's looked great so far the first few days of camp. Uh, his, his body looks great. His attitude's great. So uh, we're excited to see what he can do. Didi Gregorius, only 82 games played a season ago, 718 OPS, but clearly a guy who is capable of much more. What do you see his role being with Philadelphia this year, Matt? You know, first and foremost, you know, our manager, Joe Girardi, our bench coach, Rob Thompson, they've been with Didi before um, in New York. And the first thing you always hear about Didi is just what kind of a teammate he is, what kind of a leader he is, um, how he interacts with his teammates and with fans and just the personality that he brings to the club. So that's probably the first thing you hear about Didi and, and you guys being in and around New York. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen that. You probably know that. But um, but, you know, the, the second piece of it is, like, we, we really think Didi, you know, has turned a corner from his own elbow surgery. Um, and I think he's a great bounce back candidate this year. He obviously adds a, an element to our team defense in the middle of the field that should be big. Um, and, you know, we think his, his swing and our ballpark should, should play really well. So uh, it's, a, it's a really good fit. There's some upside in there. And I think our club uh, could use a little bit of upside like that. We thought long and hard about different ways we could go in the infield. But ultimately, we like the, we like the one-year fit here to see if Didi can bounce back. And, and, and we are very hopeful that he will. Yeah, one year, 14 million there for Gregory. She spent $133 million this offseason, seventh in Major League Baseball. That's actually less than the Nationals, a little more than the Braves. But I'm curious, Matt, what's it like having an owner like John Middleton who has said, listen, you're close up against that CBT, the, the luxury tax, but he's you know willing to go above that if it's all but producing a winner. You haven't had a winning season since 2011. What's it mean to you when you're doing your job that your owner is willing to say, listen, if you got to go out there and spend some more, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, I got to tell you, from you know, really from the moment I got to this organization, um, the ownership commitment 
uh, to winning and doing it the right way um, has been really has been on display every step of the way. Uh, even in the during the rebuild years when the major league payroll wasn't quite as high, you know, we were making a lot of investments in our infrastructure and in our organization and in personnel. Um, and never once did the owners blink at those types of investments. Obviously, last off season was a was a more sp significant off season in terms of spending on the major league roster, uh, most notably Bryce Harper. Uh, but that continued again this year. And look, as long as this team is contending, I, I would expect that, that those investments would continue. These owners, um, our fans, our whole entire organization, our players, myself, Joe, everybody wants to win, and, and that's ultimately uh, what we're hoping to do. Matt Klintak, the VP and GM there of the Philadelphia Phillies, of course. We are all endorsing Joe Girardi as a manager. We miss him a lot here at MLB Network, <laughs> but good luck. He's a great manager and a good man. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Thanks so much. All right, as we talk further about the Philadelphia Phillies, listen, Joe Girardi, that's a pretty big pickup. You know, they often say with analytics, John, you don't know how much a manager can bring, but I think Joe Girardi is worth five wins right there. No, I mean, that's your, your first outtake is what he's, Joe's been through and what he was able to do in New York. And, you know, Philadelphia, for a lot of ways, has been building this process. The expectation was so high two years ago, and they ran out to a nice lead, and they just weren't able to finish the deal. And the same thing last year. So their window of opportunity, those two years, were, were really vital because the league was not as good as it is right now. So now you couple the fact that you bring in a manager, an experienced manager, and you have tremendous upside. I would say the glass is half full. When there's a good case to be made that it could be half empty. But my optimistic view would say nobody with the exception of the catcher really did anything special other than maybe... Rio Muto and Harper had the kind of year you would hope Harper would have. But every pitcher in that rotation can be better. A lot of arms in the, in the bullpen, they could all be better. But that's the unknown. And every position player, including Hoskins, you know, did not have the year that they thought they were going to have when you put this team together. So it's a glass half full for me on an optimism, even though that city <laughs> and those fan bases may not have that same approach because it's what have you done for me lately – type attitude. So are you glass half full or glass half empty when it comes to the Phillies? Uh, can it be glass half middle? Is that, <laughs> an, is that a phrase? I think that you can make the argument that it is glass half full um, in terms of, of you look at the position players, you look at the bounce back candidates, you look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the division, are, is it, does that make you better than the, the Nationals? Does it make you better than the Mets? Does it make you better than the Braves won the division two years in a row? I'm not necessarily sold on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Perhaps it's, they're in the wrong division at the wrong time um, with the group that they have. Um, and I th just think the pitching depth is a big question mark. You're really asking Wheeler and Nola to go out and, and carry you in terms of the innings and, and the in the production. So I, it's gonna, I think it's going to be tough for them to get back to the postseason. Haven't had a winning season since 2011. Can at least get a winning season for uh, Philly? Well, I, they could have a winning season, but as you know, I'm the designated glass half empty <laughs> guy. I'm the uh, DE. That's why you're running the anchor leg here. Come uh, on. You know, they're improved. They had a nice off season. Obviously, they added a solid pitcher. Um, they added a great manager. Uh, Didi Gregorius is good for any team. Uh, I think they're in deep, as uh, John alluded to. Uh, I think it's basically – we knew the Nats. The Nats have been good, but the Braves are a much better team than they were two, three years ago. Yeah. And so they have two very, very tough competitors, at least, in that division. Uh, you know, and the Mets have good pitching, too. So I think they're in a very tough division. I do think they underperformed. I think John, again, hit it right on. The, the two guys who did basically exactly what you'd expect, mm -hmm. Rio Muto and Harper, but the rest of the team did underperform last year. So you, you could look at it that way, but I just think the competition's pretty stiff, and there's, I don't think the rotation is going to carry them. Yeah, I understand Klintak's point about Arietta being fully healthy, but again, it's another year on that body. It's going to be tough to kind of get back to that form he was there before. All right, still to come here.